This is the homework helper for Chapter 9, Section 2 in the 8th grade workbook, Identifying Sampling Errors and Bias. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the odd number questions here. So we'll start with number 1. It says, Mr. Chu puts the names of all his students in a hat and chooses 12 names without looking. He surveys these students about the amount of time they spend studying. And we want to know, is the sample biased? Well, take a look at the sampling method. He puts 12 names in a hat and pulls them without looking. So in other words, the names he pulls are pulled at random. As you heard me say in the instructions today, random is the great equalizer. That is the greatest thing in probability when something is random. And indeed, this is random here. So since this is random here, no, the sample is not biased. Why is it not biased? N because it's done at random. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question number three. Question number three says, do you prefer the new and improved Tastios or the original version? And they're asking me here, is the survey question biased? Well, as you heard me say in the notes today, anytime they start adding descriptors here, that's when you're going to have a problem. Here they're calling the one the new and improved, or they're calling this one the old original version. Well, when they're calling it new and improved and the original, the old, whatever you want to describe it, they're adding descriptors on there. All right, that's going to be a problem. So here, especially with the new and improved, that's the big problem here. So yes, this is biased. And the reason why here is because the descriptors lead people to a choice. If you were going to do this in just a pure sampling method, you would put two blind samples out, say which one do you like, sample A or sample B. And you wouldn't identify them in any way, you would just have them pick sample A or sample B, and whichever one they pick is the winner there. You don't tell them what's new and improved or the original, it doesn't work, you just leave it alone. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at question 5. It says, Alicia wants to borrow, or wants to know rather, what students at her school think of the film Hero Man 3. We're supposed to use the information below and the graph to answer the question. Sample, 80 students chosen at random from the school directory. Well, that's good. That's a good start. We see the word random. All right, question, what is your opinion that this summer's blockbuster hit Hero Man 3? A majority of the students end up liking the film according to the claim. We look at the uh, question over here, the graph rather. We see 75% like it, 15% dislike it, 10% give no opinion. Question 5 says, is the sample or question biased? Well, the sample, the sample is not. Why? Well, again, this is what we've talked about every single time. It's random. Randomness is the great equalizer here. It is a perfectly random question or a sample. The question, on the other hand, the question may be biased. Here's why. In the description here, they call it this summer's blockbuster hit, Hero Man 3. Well, if they're telling you basically that it's a hit and that everybody likes it, sometimes people might be feel impelled to compelled to believe that they should like it as well, whether or not they've actually seen it. So here I would argue that the question is biased. Why is it biased? Because the descriptor leads to a belief. What I would be prone to say here is instead of asking the question that way, just say, what is your opinion of, if you want to clarify make sure they understand it's the movie, what is the opinion of the movie Hero Man 3? Don't add any descriptors. Once you start adding descriptors, that's automatically going to be a problem for biased questions. 